I went to art school after being a math major and got a basic competency in lost wax casting, foundry work, fabricating, soldering. And of course, a few years after that, 3D printing came into existence and it immediately became obvious that that was the way to do the kind of designs that I wanted to do. I had made an original version of this by hand, hand carving waxes, and then sending them to a bronze foundry to have that done. So I persisted with that work for seven years between art school and the invention of 3D printing, or at least the popularization of 3D printing. And man, it was an uphill row. I would spend three months working on a single piece, and at that point I can make four pieces per year, and I have to sell each of them for a quarter of the salary that I need to make per year, and it was not working out. All of the math work, that I was thinking about and doing, you just can't do this by hand. You'd die trying. You wouldn't even have the idea to do this if all you had was hand work available. But with the 3D printer and then the computer to help you make the models, all of this instantly becomes possible. You can get that immediate gratification that you get from the vinyl cutter. You're making a beautiful pattern with stars, and then you can, you can vinyl cut it, or in the case of a 3D modeler, you can make it work on the screen, and then suddenly, bang, you can make it into this physical object. All you have to do is throw a little money. And I will say that this is important. The fact that I had a bunch of training in metal casting, machining, fabrication, welding, soldering, and all of that, that was absolutely key when I began working with metal by way of 3D printing, because it gave me a very physical understanding of what metal wants to do, what it can do, what it can't do, what modifications you can make to it after the 3D printer is finished. Do not imagine that 3D printing replaces traditional craftsmanship. The more you know about the materials you're using, the more you can make the printer do. This is a 3D print, but it's also a piece of slip cast porcelain. This is an oil lamp. The flame comes out here. It's wonderful. There's, of course, two sides to that, and one is subject matter, and the other is what makes you keep going on. And as to subject matter, well, mathematics is, you know, there's a lot Mm -hmm. in it. I've spent a lot of time cherry picking in mathematics sort of flipping through papers and publications and going, what is the coolest figure in here? Mm-hmm. What is my shortest path to get something that's as cool as that figure? Sure. So we have something like this. This is a triply periodic minimal surface. A ton of mathematics underlies this. But the actual equation, which you can use to create this level set, is one line of code. And you can find it on Wikipedia. And you don't have to read all the papers and understand the profound mathematics. You can just scrape that line of code. This is something that has the form of a knot. Knot theory is a deep subject in mathematics, which gives rise to many interesting shapes and also a lot of super boring and asymmetrical shapes and things that just look like tangles of string. I'm just interested in what I can get out of it quickly. A great deal of what I know I learned from surfing the internet. (laughs) I make these cubes, which contain in them protein structures, Mm And it's hard to see this very well. This is the insulin structure. As you see, it has a rather interesting threefold structure, which is quite sculptural, which is why I got involved with proteins in the first place, because they're really interesting three-dimensional shapes, and there's an awful lot of them. How How do they get the points into the glass? You start with a blank block of glass. It is not an additive process. It is not 3D printing. Blank block of glass is sitting here, and they fire a laser into it. In fact, they fire two lasers into it. Well, actually, they have one laser and a bunch of mirrors, but that's besides the point. The point is two laser beams are entering the glass, and where there's one laser beam, the glass is not heated or stressed enough to do anything, but where the beams cross, there's a point that's receiving double the amount of energy, and at that point, the glass heats up enough to make a little ping microfracture. If you look at these glass cubes under magnification, get up another one because I have another one right here. The tiny marks that these are things that these are made up of, and they're about a tenth of a millimeter in diameter. A design such as this, there now you can see it a little bit. That's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. This is a tomography scan of an extinct ammonite. Yes. And it has so much detail in here, which is never going to come through on the camera. But just imagine that there's an infinite amount of fractal resolution going on inside there. It was so amazing when the Internet began to have this kind of information. Before, you would have had to go to the library and read a book. 
the important thing is to actually do that Google, read that art, Wikipedia article, learn the keywords, find a piece of code that does something that looks kind of like what you want, do some work with it. So that's, that's the key to life. Do the homework first, and then people will respect you and start giving you more information. That's how you get your foot in the door. The second half of how to keep going and how to stay inspired is, is how do you keep going when it's not going well, and nobody's buying your stuff, and it's not coming out like you want it to. All I can say is that I have the tenacity of the cockroach. <laughs> I am able to keep going for months and in some cases years with projects that are simply not yielding very much fruit. And it's it's just hard and you have to believe and Back keep Back to going. your convictions. You have to, exactly. You have to have the, the conviction that if you think something is important, if, you, if you've looked at it and thought, wow, this, I think this is exciting and I think I can do it. To believe and to, to hold that conviction and say, well, I had a setback, but I, I'm going to figure out how to solve it. This is probably the thing that I made that got the most famous. And again, it's hard to see. I'm going to give you a black background here. This is a small instance, but the piece that got famous was about three times as big as this. And it's a lamp. It has a light bulb in the middle, and light comes out through all the little holes and makes beautiful shadows. This is a glass casting. It's the size of a paperweight. It has this design on it. I can put whatever colors I like. I've had so much fun with this. I've made about 40 of these since uh, COVID hit. I, I spun up an entire glass casting studio in my basement. The colors on this are terrible, but I love that it's bigger. And again, how did I find out about glass casting? I went on YouTube and watched a lot of videos. I drew on the fact that I had some traditional sculpture knowledge. I went to art school before computers were invented, and I learned how to make plaster molds and rubber molds and how to talk to a bronze foundry and how to generally make castings. And all of that work is very applicable when I'm casting glass. If I would had to learn how to make molds from scratch, it would have been a lot harder. It's always worth acquiring analog craft skills, always, no matter how dumb they seem being able to cut paper precisely, being able to glue things to a scrapbook precisely. Anything, any craft that somebody's willing to teach you, you should just like vacuum it up because it's <laughs> going to be useful and you can interface it with the computer when the time comes to do that. I'm so glad I was born when I was because this has been such an amazing moment to be a sculptor. This is the moment when I can not only make an infinite number of copies of a design, I can also release the file if I want to and just say, hey, this is in the public domain now. You can make my sculpture for me. Here is a little sun catcher that I made. And this is the, the 3D print part of it is the black frame and it has little grooves in it. And I took my vinyl cutter and cut out these pieces of dichroic plastic and slotted them into the frames to make this three-dimensional object. Well, it's a certain sense that what you do, what you think is actually important. And that the logical consequence of persisting with it is that you're going to end up getting reviewed by the New York Times. <laughs> you have to have sort of that center of gravity, that feeling that what you think important is important. Mm -hmm. And that it's worth pursuing and worth investing in.